After mom chose her new family over me, she kicked me out for not sharing my college fund. Now, I'm rebuilding my life without them. I'm 17, living with my mom, Lisa, who's 43, and her husband, my stepdad, Mike, along with his two kids, Ryan, 18, and Emma, 15. We all go to the same high school, but we barely interact outside of that. I know they're friends and they know mine, but that's about it. My mom married Mike three years ago, though we've all been living together for six, ever since she decided they were serious. When we first moved in together, I honestly thought it would be like those stories you hear about blended families, where everyone gets along and bonds. I pictured having siblings to hang out with, and I really tried to be optimistic about it, but that's not how things went. In fact, looking back, I probably should have seen the red flags from the start, but I guess I just didn't want to admit it. Before my mom met Mike, it was just me and her. My dad passed away when I was really little, too little to remember anything about him. I don't have many details about my dad because my mom's always been a bit vague when she talks about him. She said they weren't married because his family didn't like her, claiming they were stuck up or something, but honestly, I don't know. I was too young to understand what really went down. The only thing I know is that before my dad passed away, he set up a college fund for me. I don't know how he managed it, given how sick he was, but somehow he made sure that I'd be taken care of in the future. I found out about the fund when I was old enough to understand, and ever since, it's been this one constant in my life. No matter what happened, at least I knew I had that. The fund is controlled by a lawyer until I turn 18, so neither I nor my mom can touch it. For most of my life, it was just me and my mom in a small but cozy apartment, and we were good. She was my whole world. But things changed when she met Mike. At first, it was slow. She'd go out on dates with him, and I'd stay with my grandparents, her parents, not my dad's, because his side of the family was never in the picture. I didn't mind much at first, figuring she deserved to be happy, but then things got more serious. Mom started talking about moving in with Mike, and everything started feeling different. Mom was thrilled about Mike and his kids, going on about how wonderful they were and how lucky we were to have them. She'd tell me over and over that I'd finally have siblings and we'd be one big happy family. I was excited too. What kid wouldn't want that? When we finally moved into Mike's house, I was determined to make it work. New house, new school, new siblings, everything was new, but I was willing to put in the effort. I tried bonding with Ryan and Emma, asking if they wanted to play video games or watch movies with me. Sometimes they'd agree, but most of the time they just gave me these looks like I didn't belong. I brushed it off at first, telling myself they just needed time. After all, it wasn't just hard for me. It was a big change for them too. But months passed, and nothing changed. We lived together, but it didn't feel like we were a family. I was more like a roommate they didn't want. It wasn't like they were mean or anything. It was just that I felt invisible around them. They had their own inside jokes, memories from before I moved in, and whenever I tried to join the conversation, I'd get short answers or be ignored. Mom didn't seem to notice at all. She was so wrapped up in her new life with Mike and his kids that she didn't see how I was being left out. I started to realize that as long as she was happy with her new family, she wasn't paying attention to me. It hurt. I missed the days when it was just the two of us. I eventually stopped trying. I started staying in my room more or going out with my own friends instead of trying to hang out with Ryan and Emma. It just felt pointless. Mom would still gush about how great it was that we were all one big family, and I'd just sit there, silently knowing it wasn't true. What hurt the most was watching my mom go out of her way to make Ryan and Emma feel comfortable. She'd cook their favorite meals, take them shopping, and make sure their rooms were perfect. Meanwhile, I got whatever was left over, literally and figuratively. I didn't say anything though. What was the point? It wasn't like it would change anything. As time went on, I realized I'd never really be part of their family. Ryan and Emma didn't need another sibling. And Mike? Well, Mike was just happy as long as my mom was. They all had their unit, and I was on the outside no matter how hard I tried. It got worse as I got older. I stopped trying to join in at all. I'd eat dinner alone, stay at the library after school, and avoid being home as much as I could. It was just easier that way, less painful. I felt like I didn't belong in my own house, and it didn't seem like anyone cared. I kept thinking about my college fund. It was the one thing that kept me going, knowing that once I turned 18, I'd have the money to go to school and finally leave all this behind. I dreamed about it, being able to move out, go to college, and start a life where I didn't feel like an outsider. Things took a turn when my stepdad's past came back into the picture. I hadn't paid much attention to it before, but over the years, I pieced together that his ex-wife had drained him financially and emotionally before she left. She bailed on him and the kids, and when my mom came along, she was like a miracle for them. She helped them rebuild their lives, and they welcomed her with open arms. But me? I was just a reminder of her past life, the one they didn't want to include. The more time passed, the clearer it became that my mom was focused on making her new family work, and I was just baggage she didn't know what to do with. I stopped trying to fight it. I focused on school, on my future, and kept reminding myself that soon I'd be able to get out of there. That's when the bomb dropped one night. My mom sat me down and told me she needed to have a serious talk. I could tell from her tone it wasn't going to be good. She started talking about how expensive college is and how we're all family and we have to support each other. I didn't know where she was going with it until she hit me with the real reason for the talk. She wanted me to share my college fund with Ryan and Emma. I was in shock. My dad had set up that fund for me. 
It was the only thing he could give me, the only connection I had to him. Now she was asking me to give it up for two people who never treated me like family? I told her no, flat out. She didn't take it well. She called me selfish, saying I wasn't thinking about the family. It hurt to hear her say that. She was my mom, and she was acting like I was the villain because I wouldn't give up the one thing my dad left me. I told her I wasn't changing my mind. She could yell all she wanted, but the answer was still no. Then she said something that completely blindsided me. She told me if I didn't agree to share the fund, she'd kick me out when I turned 18. Hearing that from my own mom felt like a punch to the gut. I realized in that moment that she was choosing them over me. Her new family mattered more to her than I did. That's when I knew I had to leave. After my mom dropped the bomb that she'd kick me out if I didn't agree to share my college fund with Ryan and Emma, everything changed. The house, which already didn't feel like home, became unbearable. It was like walking on eggshells every day. My mom stopped talking to me unless she absolutely had to, and when she did, her voice was cold and distant, like she was speaking to a stranger. I guess she thought ignoring me would make me change my mind, but I was too angry to care at that point. A few days passed, and I felt more invisible than ever. My mom would sit with Mike, Ryan, and Emma, laughing and planning their weekend like nothing had happened while I sat in the corner pretending not to care. They talked about everything, their school projects, family trips, inside jokes I wasn't part of, and I just sat there, eating my food, wondering how I ever thought I'd be part of this family. It wasn't like I wasn't used to feeling left out, but this time, it felt different. I wasn't just an outsider anymore. I was actively being pushed out, and I couldn't believe my own mom was going along with it. I spent most of my time locked in my room, packing my stuff bit by bit, knowing that my birthday was coming up fast and that my mom was dead serious about kicking me out. I kept reminding myself that I'd be okay. Once I turned 18, I'd have access to my college fund. I could move out, start fresh, and finally leave behind the people who had made me feel like I didn't belong for so long. But that didn't make it hurt any less. The reality of it all, the fact that my own mom was willing to kick me out, kept hitting me like a ton of bricks. I'd lie awake at night, staring at the ceiling, wondering how things had gotten so messed up. One night, my mom knocked on my door. When I opened it, she stood there, arms crossed, looking annoyed. Have you thought about what I said? She asked, as if expecting me to change my mind just because she was giving me the chance. I took a deep breath and told her, yeah, I've thought about it. I'm not changing my mind. The look on her face was pure disbelief, like she couldn't believe I was actually standing my ground. She sighed and rubbed her forehead, a move I'd seen a thousand times when she was stressed. If you're really going to be this stubborn, then you leave me no choice, she said, her voice calm and collected, which somehow made it even worse. She told me I had one week, one week to either change my mind or find somewhere else to live. This isn't a threat, she said, as if trying to sound reasonable. It's just how it has to be. I felt my stomach drop. Hearing her say it so calmly, like it was no big deal, made it all feel too real. I just nodded because honestly, what was I supposed to say? I wasn't going to beg, and I definitely wasn't going to change my mind. She had made her choice and so had I. We were at a stalemate and neither of us was going to back down. After she left my room, I just sat there for a while, trying to process everything. I felt like my world was crumbling, but at the same time, I was numb. It was like I was watching everything happen to someone else, not me. I couldn't believe this was my life. That's when I realized I couldn't stay there anymore, no matter what. If my own mom was willing to kick me out over this, then it was clear that this house was never really my home. I needed to get out, and fast. So I reached out to a few friends, telling them everything that was going on. It was embarrassing, but I didn't have any other options. I needed a place to stay, at least until college started. One of my best friends, Sarah, came through for me. She said I could stay with her for as long as I needed, and her mom even offered to help me figure out my next steps. It was a huge relief knowing I had somewhere to go, but it was also a harsh reality check. I was really being kicked out by my own mom, and there was no turning back. The next few days were a blur. I started packing the rest of my things, clothes, books, whatever I could fit into bags, and trying to prepare myself mentally for what was coming. It felt surreal, packing up my life while my mom and Mike carried on downstairs like nothing was happening. They didn't say a word to me about it, and I didn't bother telling them what my plan was. I figured if they wanted me gone, I'd leave without making a scene. The night before my birthday, I had all my stuff packed. Sarah and her mom came over to help me move it out. It felt weird, like I was running away, but at the same time, I knew it was the only way I was going to be free from all this. My mom didn't even come out to say goodbye. I remember looking back at the house one last time, half expecting her to show up at the door and stop me, but she didn't. It was just empty, and in that moment, I realized she had already moved on. Leaving wasn't easy, but it felt like the only option I had. I was free, but I was also alone. The people who were supposed to be my family had made it clear that they didn't need me, and I wasn't going to beg for a place in their lives anymore. At Sarah's house, I unpacked what little I had and tried to settle in. It was strange, going from feeling like I didn't belong anywhere to suddenly being surrounded by people who cared about me. Sarah's mom was amazing, and she didn't make me feel like a burden at all. She even helped me start looking for part-time jobs so I could save up for when I eventually moved into my own place. But just when I thought things were calming down, my mom showed up at Sarah's house. I was in the middle of studying when Sarah's mom called me downstairs. The moment I saw my mom standing there, I knew it wasn't going to be good. 
She had that same look on her face, the one she always had when she was about to lecture me. You need to take down that post, she snapped as soon as I walked into the room. I was confused for a second, but then I realized what she was talking about. I had posted on social media about everything that had happened, how my mom had kicked me out, how I felt like I was never really part of the family. It wasn't anything dramatic, just me venting. But apparently, some of her friends had seen it, and she wasn't happy. You're making me look bad, she said, her voice rising. It's not fair. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Fair. I shot back. You kicked me out, remember? You chose them over me, and now you're mad because people know. She didn't want to hear it. She kept going, accusing me of making things worse for her and saying it was my fault she was losing friends over this. She even called me immature and dramatic for posting it. I was done. I'm not taking anything down, I said firmly. You need to leave? Sarah's mom, who had been standing nearby, jumped in and told her that if she didn't leave, she'd call the police. My mom stormed out, but not before throwing one last jab at me. You'll regret this one day. When they're all gone and you have no one left, don't come crawling back to me. That one hit hard, but I knew I couldn't let it get to me. I stood my ground, watching her drive off, and even though it felt like a knife twisting in my chest, I knew I had to let her go. Over the next few days, things started to settle down. I got used to living with Sarah's family, and they made me feel welcome in a way I hadn't felt in years. It wasn't easy, and there were still moments when I missed the idea of a real family, but I knew I was better off. I had a future to look forward to, college, my own life, and a chance to start over without all the negativity weighing me down. In the end, I realized that sometimes you have to walk away from the people who are supposed to love you if they're not willing to be there for you. My mom had made her choice, and I was making mine. It hurt, but I knew it was the right decision. After my mom's explosive visit to Sarah's house, things calmed down for a while, but I still felt the weight of everything that had happened. It wasn't easy, but living with Sarah's family made me realize just how toxic things had been with my mom and her new family. For the first time in years, I wasn't walking on eggshells. I didn't have to constantly try to fit into a family that didn't want me. It was strange, but it was also freeing. Sarah's mom was amazing, treating me like I was part of the family. She even helped me find a part-time job at a local cafe so I could start saving up for when I eventually moved into my own place. It felt good to finally have a plan that didn't involve relying on anyone but myself. I knew I had to get out of the situation, and this was the first real step toward building a future for myself. Meanwhile, my mom had gone completely silent. After she stormed out of Sarah's house, she didn't call, didn't text, nothing. It was like I had vanished from her life, which hurt more than I wanted to admit. Part of me kept checking my phone, hoping she'd reach out, but another part of me knew she wouldn't. I had to let go of the idea that she'd suddenly realize her mistake and try to make things right. A week or so later, I got a text from her. For a second, my heart leapt, thinking maybe she'd come around. But when I opened it, all it said was, come pick up the rest of your stuff or I'll throw it out. There was no how are you or I'm sorry, just business. I replied that I'd come get it but didn't need her to be there when I did. I didn't want another fight, and I definitely didn't want to see her if she was just going to try to guilt trip me again. She agreed and said she'd leave my things in the garage. When I showed up to get my stuff, the house felt so different. Cold, empty. All of my belongings were stuffed into trash bags and dumped in the garage like I was nothing more than junk being thrown out. I had to hold back tears as I dragged the bags into Sarah's car. It was one of those moments where everything hits you at once, and I realized that this was really happening. I was being erased from their lives. But what really hit me was when I walked past my old room and saw that Emma had already moved in. Her stuff was everywhere, and she was redecorating, putting up posters, and laying out her clothes on the bed that used to be mine. It was like I'd been replaced, like I'd never existed there at all. I didn't say anything to her, and she didn't say anything to me. She just glanced up for a second, saw me, and went back to what she was doing. I walked out of that house feeling more alone than ever, but also strangely relieved. I was done. They had moved on, and now I could too. There was no going back. Back at Sarah's place, I dumped the trash bags in the corner of the room and sat there for a while, just staring at them. It felt like unpacking those bags meant accepting that my relationship with my mom was really over, and I wasn't ready for that yet. Sarah, being the amazing friend she is, didn't push me. She just sat with me, talked about random things to distract me, and eventually convinced me to go grab some takeout. It helped more than I expected. The days started blending together after that. I threw myself into my part-time job and focused on school. Sarah's family made me feel like I belonged, and it was a relief not to have the constant tension hanging over my head. I was saving money, planning for college, and starting to feel like I could actually move forward with my life. But just when I thought I was finally free from all the drama, my mom showed up again. It had been a few weeks since I left, and I was getting used to not hearing from her, so when she knocked on Sarah's door, I knew it wasn't going to be good. I was upstairs studying when Sarah's mom called me down, saying my mom was at the door. I didn't want to face her, but I knew I had to. As soon as I saw her standing there, I could tell she was angry. Before I even said a word, she launched into a rant. You need to take down that post, she snapped. You're making me look bad. I was confused at first, but then I realized she was talking about the post I'd made on social media about everything that had happened, about how she'd kicked me out, how I'd never felt like part of the family, and how hurt I was by the whole situation. 
I hadn't expected it to get much attention, but apparently some of her friends had seen it, and now she was furious. You're making me look like a terrible mother, she said, her voice getting louder. It's not fair. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. After everything she'd done, she was worried about her reputation? Fair. I shot back. You kicked me out, remember? You chose them over me, and now you're mad because people know the truth. She didn't care about my side of the story. All she cared about was how it made her look. She kept going, accusing me of making things worse for her and saying it was my fault she was losing friends. She even had the nerve to call me immature for posting about it. By then, I was done. I'm not taking anything down, I said, my voice steady. You need to leave? Sarah's mom, who had been standing nearby the whole time, stepped in and told her that if she didn't leave, she'd call the police. My mom, seeing she wasn't getting anywhere, stormed off, but not before throwing one last jab at me. You'll regret this one day when they're all gone, and you have no one left. Don't come crawling back to me, she spat before slamming the door behind her. It stung more than I wanted to admit, but I knew I couldn't let her words get to me. I watched her leave, feeling like a part of me was finally breaking free, even though it hurt like hell. I went back upstairs, shaking with anger and hurt, but Sarah and her mom were there to remind me that I didn't need people like that in my life. I had real friends who cared about me, real support from people who actually wanted me around. Over the next few weeks, things got better. I settled into a routine, working, saving money, and getting ready for college. I still thought about my mom and how everything had gone down, but I knew deep down that leaving was the right choice. It wasn't easy, but it was the only way I could build a future for myself without being weighed down by a family that didn't want me. I started looking forward to college, where I could finally have a fresh start. I didn't have to pretend to be part of a family that never accepted me. I could create my own path, my own life, without the constant pressure of trying to fit into a world that wasn't mine. In the end, I realized that sometimes, walking away is the only way to take control of your life. My mom had made her choice, and I had made mine. It was hard, but I knew I was better off without her and the toxic situation she had created. After my mom's last visit, things started to fall into place. The weight of everything she said, how I'd regret it, how I was ruining her life, slowly started to fade. I realized that I had been holding on to this hope that maybe she'd come around, that she'd realize how wrong she was for kicking me out, but that hope was gone now. I knew she had made her choice, and I needed to move forward without looking back. Living with Sarah's family gave me a sense of stability that I hadn't felt in years. Sarah's mom was kind and supportive, always checking in to make sure I was doing okay. She helped me budget my money for my part-time job, and gave me advice on college, life, and everything in between. It felt like I finally had people around me who genuinely cared about my future without any hidden agendas. I started focusing more on my college applications and planning for my next steps. The college fund my dad had set up was finally within reach, and I knew that once I turned 18, I'd be able to use it to pay for school and start fresh. I felt a sense of freedom that I hadn't felt in a long time, like I was finally in control of my own life. But as I got closer to my 18th birthday, the reality of everything hit me again. I was about to start a new chapter in my life, but there was still this lingering sadness over how things had turned out with my mom. I knew I couldn't go back and fix things, but part of me still wondered what life would have been like if she had chosen me, if she had stood up for me instead of her new family. It hurt to think about it, but I had to let it go. On the morning of my 18th birthday, I woke up feeling different. Not just because it was my birthday, but because I knew this was the day I'd finally get access to the college fund my dad left me. It wasn't about the money itself, it was about what the money represented. It was my dad's way of taking care of me, even though he wasn't here anymore. It was the key to my future, the future I had been dreaming about for years. Sarah and her mom surprised me with a small birthday celebration. It wasn't anything huge, just a cake and a few presents, but it meant the world to me. They didn't have to do anything, but they did. They made me feel loved, like I mattered. It was the first time in a long time that I felt truly seen and appreciated. Later that day, I met with the lawyer who had been managing the college fund. He walked me through all the paperwork and explained how the money would be dispersed. I could hardly believe it when he handed me the documents, showing that the fund was officially mine. I had been waiting for this moment for so long, and now it was finally happening. After I left the lawyer's office, I sat in my car for a while, just taking it all in. I wasn't just a kid anymore, and I didn't need to rely on my mom or anyone else to determine my future. I had everything I needed to start a new life on my own terms. The months leading up to college were a blur of planning, working, and preparing. I stayed with Sarah's family the whole time, saving money from my job and getting everything ready for when I moved into my dorm. Sarah and I even talked about being roommates in college, but she ended up getting accepted to a different school out of state. I was happy for her, even though I knew I'd miss having her around. The day I moved into my dorm was a mix of emotions. On one hand, I was excited to finally be starting college, to have a fresh start where no one knew me as the outsider in my own family. But on the other hand, it felt strange not having my mom there to see me off. I saw other students hugging their parents, taking photos, and sharing tearful goodbyes, and I couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness that I wasn't experiencing the same thing. Still, I knew this was the right move for me. I had worked hard to get here, and I wasn't going to let the past hold me back. College was my chance to build a life on my own, free from the toxic environment I had left behind. As the weeks went by, I adjusted to college life. I made new friends, joined clubs, and threw myself into my classes. 
It was a completely different world from the one I had known, and for the first time in a long time, I felt like I truly belonged. No one here knew about the drama with my mom or the struggles I'd faced growing up. I could just be me, and that was enough. Occasionally, I'd think about my mom. I wondered how she and Mike were doing, whether Ryan and Emma were off at college, too. Part of me still missed her, still wished things had turned out differently, but I knew that reaching out would only bring more pain, more guilt, and more rejection. I had to move on. One day, out of the blue, I got a text from my mom. I hadn't heard from her in months, and seeing her name pop up on my phone made my stomach flip. The message was short and to the point, I hope you're doing well. If you ever want to talk, I'm here. I stared at the screen for a long time, debating whether or not to respond. I wanted to believe that she had changed, that she realized how much she had hurt me, but I also knew that it was too late. Too much had happened. Even if she was ready to talk, I wasn't sure I was ready to forgive her. In the end, I didn't reply. Not because I didn't care, but because I needed more time. Maybe one day we could rebuild our relationship, but for now, I needed to focus on myself and the life I was building. Looking back on everything, I realized that leaving my mom's house was the best decision I ever made. It forced me to grow up, to rely on myself, and to stop waiting for people to accept me. It wasn't easy, and there were plenty of times when I felt lost and alone, but it was worth it. Now, as I walk across my college campus, I feel a sense of pride in how far I've come. I'm not the scared, lonely kid I used to be. I'm stronger, more independent, and more sure of who I am and what I want from life. And even though my relationship with my mom is still complicated, I know that I'll be okay. At the end of the day, I've learned that family isn't always about blood. Sometimes the people who stand by you, who support you, and who make you feel loved are the ones you choose. And for me, that's Sarah and her family. They're the ones who showed me what it means to be truly cared for, and for that, I'll always be grateful. So, yeah, my mom kicked me out for not sharing my college fund with my step-siblings, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through. But in the end, it was also the best thing that could have happened to me. It gave me the chance to start over, to build a life where I didn't feel like an outsider, and to finally realize my own worth. And for that, I wouldn't change a thing.